PrEP is the daily pill that can significantly reduce your chances of getting HIV. And typically, it takes a trip to a physician to get it. Now you can visit select pharmacies, get tested on the spot, and walk away with your first month of PrEP. It's easier than ever to protect yourself from HIV and with all the coverage options, you can get it at a very low cost. To find your nearest participating pharmacy, go to doh.wa.gov slash prep now that's doh.wa.gov slash prep do it now this is a message from the washington state department of health and public health seattle and king county join rainier avenue radio from five to midnight for sunday evening sound sessions jazz from the cabinets from big poppy that's right it's time once again for jazz from the cabinets with big poppy sergio lacour's love lines it's sergio's love lines with sergio lacour go into the phone line tell her who we talking to sage prince and just my opinion this is sage and that's just about gonna do it for the first half of just my opinion k fox night beat with nasty ness rodriguez the beat of the fox k fox night beat nasty ness you know what you're gonna listen from five to midnight just turn it on and don't stop dj alibaba the Underground Surround Sound Star Time with Paul Pearson. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Paul Pearson. Sunday and evening sound Star sessions Time. on Rainier Avenue Radio. Trust me, you'll be listening the entire time from 5 to miss Sunday evening. Your sound session on Rainier Avenue Radio. COVID-19 hurt my income, my health, and my family. We were about to lose our home when we heard we might be eligible for homeowner assistance funds from the government. We called 1-877-894-HOME and a housing counselor stepped in, talked to our lender and saved our home. Federal funding details at WashingtonHalf.org. That's WashingtonHAF.org. No, you can't get enough of Rainier Avenue Radio. Dot world. You're listening to Heartbeat Radio. I'm your host, Cindy Bright. Heartbeat Radio is a conversation aimed to take the pulse of corporate America. Opportunities for people of color, we're getting lost in the shuffle of change. I'm that provocateur of change. The hearts of corporate America are addressed. Access and opportunities will be accelerated for all people. Through Heartbeat Radio, you will gain a deeper understanding of what is necessary for change. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Heartbeat Radio and Podcast. I am your host, Cindy Bright. I'm glad you can join us tonight. We have a good show for you uh, and a campaign we really want um, all of you to pay attention to. I'll explain more about it uh, before Claudia comes on. She is uh, Claudia Kaufman. She is running in the 47th district, which is the Kent area. It's an important race. Uh, she's going to join us here in just a little bit. Um, so, but I just want to set the stage that I want to make sure that you're all paying attention to um, her race and why um, we're hosting her. Let me just say, you know, Monday was um, Indigenous People Day here. And so we're fortunate she is an Indigenous woman to highlight her and her campaign. Uh, she's a former legislator um, back on the ballot. I'm excited to be able to host her this evening. Let me bring uh, Joy on with me this evening, co hosting with me this evening. Good evening, Joy. I think you're on mute. <laughs> I can't hear you. Let's see if we can get her. It shows you're on mute on the screen, so we can't hear you. Let's see if the producer can get her. I got it. <laughs> there you are. <laughs> Sorry about that. I had headphones on all day, and I think it was still tuned to my headphones. Hello. Good evening. Glad to be here with you again, Cindy. Yeah, looking forward to having Claudia on here in just a few minutes. You know, it's a, it's interesting that, you know, this is Indigenous. We had Indigenous People Day on Monday. There's a lot going on nationally, uh, again, with this whole reckoning on race. Politics, race and politics is a big deal. 
and uh, women who are stepping up and stepping into office, or let me rephrase it, the right women that are stepping up <laughs> and going into office. I don't know if you caught um, um, the news story about the elected official in Los Angeles City Council. Um, have you followed that? I just saw that today. She resigned. But I was looking for what she had said, you know, what, what occurred. I was so, I was like, what occurred to make her say something racist? And are you not a woman of color? So. Well, you know, it's interesting. The reason why I brought it up is for that point, because I think there is a conversation to be had around um, anti-Blackness. And I think mm. that a lot of people don't recognize or understand the plight of black women and the things we talk about every week on the show, but our plight and what black women face. Um, even Is that who she said something racist to? Um, yeah. That worry? yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I've seen it happen. Um, I yeah. actually experienced it earlier this year in a consulting assignment I did where people automatically assume that brown and black uh, people are um, having each other's backs. That's not always the case, nor is it the case that black people are working uh, within our own communities with each other. So, you know, we have a lot of work to do when it comes to putting people in positions of power, uh, because people in positions of power uh, can make or break communities, as you know, and we just don't have the right people, enough right people in these positions. And so, yeah. and we both know as former candidates for office to unseat somebody who holds a seat already is not easy to do. Claudia's right. race is interesting. Um, to say the I'll, least. To say the least. Um, I'm just going to say to people who are listening, just think Herschel Walker for a few minutes before we get to uh, bringing her on, because it's important that we distinguish in her campaign particularly, that um, the people who are running against her uh, are likely, are, are MAGA funded. Uh, and so MAGA mm -hmm. is throwing a lot of money behind pe people, people that look like us, people with darker skin, uh, to try to unseat and take power away from us. So that's a really important. And Kent, you know, last year, was it last year when Don Bennett ran for the mayor of Kent? Correct. Correct. Yeah, watching Kent's lack of voter turnout, like their numbers were really, really dismal. I remember looking at that. So And having a deputy mayor or a chief of police who was using anti-Semitic and racist um, language and undertones in, in his behavior was not helping the issue either. So... Um, I know they've been dealing with that in Kent as well. So we, there's some work to do there. Yes. Um, and I feel like Mona Doss said she really put um, an effort forward to make sure that all voices were heard in that community, not just uh, the wealthy, not just the folks in power, um, but sharing that power and sharing that space um, um, for her community. And so... Dawn was trying to step into that as well to give voice to those folks there in that community. So you're right. It's it's uh, we got some work to do there. And I think it's also noteworthy of mentioning, <laughs> and we'll be covering. You did, it. you did invite them on. I did. <laughs> I did invite. I look. I, I don't claim this show to be all about politics. It's not all about politics. We focus the show on advancing the lives of brown and black people. And so politics is one piece of the equation. And we tend to bring on progressive people who are actually trying to advance racial equity. That has not totally been the Republican party. So they've not had a vested interest, but because this particular race, they it's a, you know, a black man running in that race. Mm -hmm. I invited him, I actually interviewed him. So before, cause I was trying to discern um, what was that. Um, I invited him on to the show. Um, he had originally accepted, uh, this was before the primary, and then his campaign manager um, said, you know, we're just two left on this show. And I'm like, well, what is two left? You mean because we're asking for the same thing that the right has? That's considered two left? 
or because we're asking to people to speak to the actual community that they claim that they want to serve and represent. Yes. So that's too left to ask them to come on and talk to us. Again, another dangerous, a dangerous proposition for, you know, putting people that look like us, um, pitching them to run for office and then MAGA throws their money behind. And then look, we, we have problems in the legislature too. Let's just not, I, you know, I don't dance around topics, as you know, and I go right to the heart of the matter. We have problems because we're losing even the people that we're fighting to um, help get into seats of power uh, are not lasting in office. Senator Doss is leaving. Um, Representative Harris, uh, Kirsten Terrell Harris in the 37th, not rerunning. Representative yes, yes. Johnson yes, yes. Mm -hmm. in the 30th, not rerunning. Uh, controversy coming out of the legislature. I sent you some information today. I don't know if you had a chance to look at it. The infighting that's going on in the party, the bullying, the behaviors of people in the caucus. I mean, we have some significant stuff going on. And so how do we, as we're trying to help get, you know, BIPOC people elected, I mean, we're certainly not trying to help them get elected to go in and get abused. We are trying yeah. to people in positions of power to help move our communities forward and so yeah did you get a chance to look at the i did not i'm you know i'm in the middle of an election season yeah, i know not that i'm running but um helping you know supporting other folks who are uh running for office and um making sure that um i uh, i am there for those candidates of color for those women for those first time candidates um, who are running with um, an environmental platform, an environmental justice platform, um, and just making sure that they have the support they need. So I know I did not get a chance. Would you like to elaborate or is that for a whole nother show? Is that a whole nother show? Uh oh. <laughs> it's, um, it's interesting, I'll just say, you know, I um, one of the things I really try hard to do is to be respectful to people. I don't want to shame people. Um, it's never been my intention to um, try to do that. Um, and so, I mean, it's all public information. So if people want to know what's going on in the legislature, they can get it through public information requests. It's not hard to find. I think a lot of people don't realize that all of this information is public, but it's mm -hmm. certainly um, alarming. I would just say that's a word I would use. It's alarming and concerning and um, hearing what people are saying, you know, they're closed lips, you know, p politicians um, are not at liberty, I guess, to, you know, talk about what's going on in their own house. We, any business keeps their stuff in house. They right. happen to be a public entity so we can see what's going on in the house. And so, it's just it's just interesting stuff. And so it'll be fascinating. Um, it's worth it's noteworthy to say that um, Kirsten Talley Harris's seat that she is vacating in the 37th district. So that's mm -hmm. right in Rainier Avenue radio. Mm -hmm. community. Um, there are two candidates competing for that seat, uh, Amijah Smith and Chapalo Street. There yes. is a candidate form that Rainier Avenue Radio is going to host um, on the 27th at 6 p.m. So we have two. They've both been on Heartbeat. Um, That's right. Past before. Uh, so I think they're both uh, quality candidates. It'll be fascinating to see uh, who makes it through the general election. Um, so, yeah, it, it's. I was um, with Elijah this past Friday. Um, I heard her speak at the One America event at the cultural center. Um, and, um, first of all, I just adore her. Um, and, um, absolutely, um, feel like Chapalo is a great candidate as well. So it's kind of tough because you've got two great candidates. They just have different approaches to the solutions for the issues. And, not to say that one is wrong and one is right, just different. Yeah, um, I, I, I think I they, that same conclusion too when they were on the show here. Yeah, and, you know, look, we, I lean. It's no secret. You know, I'm a black woman. I'm trying to help other black women. So, <laughs> I, you know, I, I just, I lean that way. I mean, I have nothing against him, and he would certainly no, not at all. Yeah, I'm just, you know, we. 
we're just trying to, the, our plight is so tough. And, uh, you know, I just think my, my male listeners may not appreciate this comment, but, you know, men have a lot of opportunities to, for power, maybe not necessarily black men per se, but um, I'm just trying to make sure our sisters get in. So I'm just trying to make sure we give them a voice and, you know, try to help get money in their pockets. I mean, this, this is a money game, as you know, I haven't yep. looked the PDC reports. Have you looked at them in that yeah. campaign to see how that's going? Yeah. yeah. It should be my, my staff have, my, my colleagues do, but I don't. That's just one place. Somebody says, well, how much did they get in the... I didn't even look at the PDC when I was running. So it's like, yeah, that's no, the I, last I place I'm going to look. Those are pretty um, indicative when you look at, I mean, they're not an absolute, but you can tend to look at numbers and see who's yes. likely to get into the seat for our but money doesn't uh, matter sometimes money doesn't matter i have more money than my opponent she that's got true in. that's true she, she also ran against a republican White so woman. when you when you yeah. ran the party is going to help get money in your you know in your campaign they they right. make sure that money comes your way um imaja and chipolo are both democrats and so right the likelihood is that they're not getting a lot of backing, um, well, directly from, right. um, yeah. So, well, uh, and, and I will say, isn't that like the best thing to have is two great Democratic candidates who care deeply for their community and want to do the right thing? Mm -hmm. Again, it's just different approaches to getting to those solutions for those issues. But I always think it'd be great if every um, community had folks step up like that um, mm -hmm. and, and you had to choose between, you know, the two. Um, mm -hmm. and, and I'm with you. We, we, we tend to lean towards those black and brown women um, mm -hmm. because we were once them running for office and we know how tough it is. Um, but yeah. I loved her comment to me Friday night. She said, I haven't experienced what I thought I would. I think that's how she said it. But I, she's like, there are so many people that are just putting just fellowship and love and commitment into her campaign, whether it's hours, money, saying, encouraging and empowering words to her. She is loving campaigning. And I will, I, that's what I want to hear from the women who have come after us who are um, stepping into that space to run for office is that the, that is the experience they're having, you know, not, and that it's hard. Yes. And that I'm tired. Yes. Um, but um, that she just can feel that people are supportive of her and encouraging her to keep going. And so. Um, she and, not, and, I'm just, and I'm just going to say this story because I do. We all know women can, every woman can outwork a man. There's just, <sighs> We, so let's just be clear about what women can do and produce and black women, particularly, we know how hard black women work. And so right. I think that that gives just from a, the perspective of, you know, who, who we think if I'm betting on somebody who will get in the legislature and right. be less inclined to play politics and more inclined right. to step into the That's gritty this. part mm -hmm. of work and so yeah. that tends to be us yes uh, yeah so that's why and we're also life. not quick to back down and we're not quick to be quiet especially when we're told to be quiet that's like the least likely time we're going to be quiet is when somebody tries to tell us to be quiet and so I'm sorry but I feel like you know if I'm reading between the lines I was very shocked for those three folks to say I'm not coming back I'm done one well, more, and more so because uh, because they're that's people of our, color. <laughs> well, there uh, it's our life always that um, we are subject to um, abuse. Yes. Um, so, from my perspective, it had to be pretty egregious, like more so than what we're because we're so used to dealing with it that you you know you kind of know how to navigate these folks because we live in these spaces and we work in these spaces where these folks are around but for how, how hard it is to get elected how hard it is to raise money to get your campaign how hard it is to work 90 and 100 hours a week and yeah. to stay for one term because literally when you get elected you have 
less than three months off. to breathe before yeah. you have to start your next right campaign again. to yeah. start to run again. And it's a lot of work. And so and even during that one year kind of break, sort of kind of nine month break, you're raising money for the next time yeah. you run. You're talking to people. You're you're going to events. People are still you're still telling them I'm going to run again. Don't forget me. And they're giving you money. So you're raising money until that window comes where you can't raise money because you're in session. It's yeah, it's, um, you know, I'm just, look, I'm just really curious about um, what's really happening, particularly after I read that report today about the things that are going on there, because it brings to light or it brings the question, the question, it's a lot, it's like 20, one report is like 14 pages. The internal document in it is a lot. It's a lot to read. Um, but clearly, um, you know, it's a reflection of leadership from my perspective. When you mm -hmm. have that kind of um, egregious behavior going on, and it's going to be fascinating come January to see what happens with, I think, like some of the seats. Will we continue to have the same Speaker of the House? You know, mm -hmm. She is the person accountable, I think. I, I mean, I don't know the infrastructure that well, but I, I think for the legislators, why did things get to the point that they have? Why mm -hmm. are, um, when brown and black people are raising issues, why is it that they're never heard? Why does it take so much abuse or things to happen before somebody acts on it? Like it's, um, it's classic what happens in our communities, mm -hmm. but it is disappointing, I think, to, you know, know that we're fighting tooth and nail to help get people elected. And then um, when people are elected and there are staff in there to support them, we all know staff positions are held a lot by brown and black people. And so mm -hmm. we can't abuse the people. We, can, we shouldn't be abusing anybody and how you talk to folks. Let's just break that down, how you talk to people. Uh, just because you have a, a stripe on your hat, it's my Navy days, you know, you have, you're a supervisor, or you're in a position of power, all of a sudden you think it's okay to talk to people in tones of voices that are diminishing. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's just going to be fascinating. We really have to have some, I, I did hear, not see that. I said, uh, I'll have to look at what you sent me. I did not see that. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, it's fascinating. Um, but we really, again, so when you look at the type of leaders, the type of people that we need to have in elected office, I mean, not only are they people that need to have grit, fire, and passion around, you know, progressive policies to change things, we also have to have people who are able to navigate, um, yeah. you know, <laughs> toxic uh, environments. And that's not an easy thing for any of us because it's so triggering to have to be around that 24 seven. Right. Right. I, I, I am encouraged though by the candidates that we do have. I'm encouraged by the Amijah Smiths, the Claudia Kaufman's um, some of the, the black and brown women who, um, okay. Um, who um, are running for reelection. Representative Jamila Taylor, uh, Representative April Berg. I'm encouraged yeah. that those women are still in there fighting the fight and doing the good work. Um, that they're doing it on the inside. You know, we talked about this as I started coming on with you on the Heartbeat Radio with you. We were like, we're glad we didn't get elected because now we can talk. <laughs> you have this conversation we're having tonight. Like, you're not going to talk. We're not, about we're not handcuffed to to not be able to say, hey. What's going on? But we, you know, we not only just as the media, but our constituents, the listeners, like we're we're carrying the voice of people forward. We bring them on to ask the questions. We highlight their campaigns, but we also ask them questions to help, you know, the listeners, their constituents are watching the show. And so right. people, it's people that decide who the electeds are. And so, and we're the ones paying, we're paying their salaries. And so the expectation is we're paying taxes and we're getting out and voting for you. Then we expect you, we don't work for you. You work for you us. For us. Yeah. You work for yeah. Us. So and yeah. how does that translate when you're talking policies? Mm -hmm. um, is that good policy for us? You know, I'm, I'm always going to go back to the, to the, uh, to the police reform bills. Thank you, Representative Jesse Johnson. Mm -hmm. I um, was at an event and I heard 
um, Representative Lovick, who's now running for a Senate seat, uh, Senator uh, uh, Monka Dinkra, and uh, I believe it's uh, Senator Jamie Peterson, uh, talk about who was at the table, because I asked the question, who was at the table when those bills and those policies were being developed? And all three of them absolutely said law enforcement was at the table. But in my community, I get Facebook posts about how the law enforcement can't do their job because of a policy that the legislature has enacted. And I'm thinking to myself, you were at the table. Why can't you do your job? And so there, there, therein lies that divide of, well, I noticed sure you had a chance to voice your concern while you were at the table. I noticed that several of the candidates, including uh, Claudia Kaufman tonight, I looked at um, the, the issues that they are running on and public mm -hmm. safety is one of her issues. So I saw Kim Schreier's um, ads are talking about public safety. So it is fascinating because I think the distinction of, I, I don't think anybody, I mean, I'm just, this is my interpretation. I don't think um, defund the police was about doing away with public safety. Mm -hmm. um, it and was about who said yeah. that. No one said that. No you one didn't said say that. When you ran. I didn't say it when I ran. I've not heard any other folks say it. What, what? Do you want police? better policing? We want better policing. Oh, and stop killing our brown and black people. That's the issue. And so the defunding was around. Nobody's ever said we don't believe we need public safety. That's right. Um, we just need the murders to stop. And we need to have resources, which are both police officers and money reallocated. Mental so, health. Yep. Yep. Um, we need the right people holding the guns, not the mm -hmm. racist uh, people that are out there and, and right. who are, you know, I, I don't know what the percentage is of crooked cops, but, you know, I, I trust in none of them. And so, you know, they have, they have work to do in the public right. safety community to rebuild trust. That's right. Um, and, I, you know, I never, I've listened to, have you read, um, Chief Carmen Best book. I have it. I, I have it, but it's in my Audible library. I I picked it up. I have it in my Audible library. I'll, I'll be curious. Maybe I'll listen I, to it when I when I fly home to California. I'll listen to it on the plane. My yeah. perception is I thought she did a phenomenal job, uh, given what um, how her hands were tied. I know she focused right. on hiring and bringing in you know the right kind of police right. officers. Uh, she also has a police union to deal with and the longstanding police officers that are there that she can't. I mean, I've worked in labor environments and your hands do get tied with what you can do. I mean, there is a uh, I forgot the term. It's like a progressive discipline policy that you have to go. Right. through. I mean, and so that's not an easy feat that she had. I'm not making excuses because I'm tired of watching people getting killed in the streets. And I'm tired of watching no justice done to the people who are doing it. I yes. saw, yes, yeah, I saw that again today. I, I um, there was another non guilty um, finding. Uh, I was reading attorney Ben Crump. I follow him a lot. I have to take deep breaths because God bless these brothers who are out here as lawyers fighting for families and trying to do the right things and help because it's so much. It's so heavy and so much. But anyhow, Speaking yeah. I'll of labor. Do we want to give a shout out to our labor ladies? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we Carter have... and April Sims, now the president and secretary. Well, treasurer. In January. They, they take the seat January 5th, I believe. I am yeah. first in the country, right. two black women uh, running a labor union. And I am here for all of it. And yes. I'm so yes. excited. And so I just... I appreciate both of them and the work that they've done and put in. Um, if, if anybody's paid their dues, I'm gonna say, yep, uh, mm -hmm. they've paid their dues. And mm -hmm. um, agree. Yeah. yeah. And so I'm like, yay. Yeah. I'm I super agree. excited for both of them. And we said labor. So that's why I just, I, I thought of that. But um, going back to, you know, wanting to make sure that we are always thinking about the folks who, who are elected and, and if they're making policies for pe for the people 
Um, we know that when brown and black women and when women in general are elected, statistically, we know that the lives of the people in their communities and in their state as a whole change for the better. Um, that is Let's also, yeah. let me also call yeah. out before we go to commercial um, and see if we have uh, Claudio uh, joining us here in a couple minutes. But what I will say also is that we really have to pay attention. And I'm going to say this from a seasoned, because I'm trying not to call myself older, but a seasoned former um, executive would say that when you get into these seats, so April and Sharika, we are not viewed as leaders. Black women mm. are not seen as leaders. And when we get into positions of power, the phrase that was shared with me, and I actually shared this with April, and I said to her, you know, this phrase was said to me, the higher on the flagpole you go, the oh. more your ass shows. And when that's happening, the other women, the non-women of color, are going to come clawing to try to tear their power away from them. This is what we talked about a little bit last week about yeah, yeah. America. So that's the next piece of work that has to be done is how do we help support them in their leadership positions? What is it we need to do as other Black women in the community? How do we make sure that we, because they're going to face it. We all know it. It is a 100% guaranteed gig that putting Black women in positions of power are going to ignite the other women who feel entitled to have those positions of power. And mm -hmm. that's how that's going to run down. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We've got Claudia in the waiting room waiting on us. So let's do that. And we'll bring her in right after the commercials. Half that up in sacks. I favor Black businesses. Assuming you're rooting for everybody that's Black. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Assuming I'm rooting for everybody that's Black. Yo. Yo, yo. I'm Paul Pearson, host of Star Time, and when I'm not deep frying a turducken in a closed garage, I'm listening to Rainier Avenue Radio World. Are you a small business owner in Seattle who was impacted by COVID-19? The Seattle Office of Economic Development is investing $8 million to connect small businesses to operating capital. The Small Business Capital Access Program will lower the cost of Washington State Small Business Flex Fund loans by paying down 25% of the loan principal. Eligible small businesses can borrow up to $150,000 with a 4% interest rate to cover expenses like payroll, rent, utilities, and supplies. You're listening to Rainier Avenue Radio Dot World. I'm Graham Bill Emerson along with my partner, Renault Pepe. And we host the show Little Line Sports right here on Rainier Avenue Radio Dot World where we talk about football, basketball, local sports, national sports, Seahawks, UW, Seattle U Redhawks, Garfield Bulldogs, all that and more right here on Midline Sports on Radio Avenue Radio.world. Mga kaibigan, ito po si Kuya Bert Kawili. And this is Nile Salvador from Australia. And I'm Norb Kawili, also known as Norb Cam. Kung gusto niyo po ang latest news and events from the Philippines at the local Filipino community, Phil Am Radio po. We play Filipino music and interview guests from all around the world. And I'll keep you updated on the latest Seahawks and sports news. Kaya always tune in. Phil Am Radio every Tuesday, 1 to 2.30 p.m. Pacific time on Rainier Avenue. And in YouTube and Facebook. Salamat po. If you or a family member are 55 or over and need nursing home level care, but want to keep living where you are, check out Providence Elder Place Pace. This program offers health care, housing, transportation, and recreational activities. There are no co-pays or deductibles, and it's covered through Medicare and Medicaid. Providence Elder Place Pates works to keep you healthy and in your home. Call 206-320-5325 or visit Providence.org Elder Place. Providence.org Elder Place. Your community radio station will provide you with more information. Radio. 
Welcome back to Heartbeat Radio and Podcast. I am your host, Cindy Bright, with Joy Stanford tonight. Before we introduce in uh, our esteemed candidate who's running for the 47th, I'm going to restate some of the things that I had said earlier in the show. Uh, This is an important uh, race in the 47th district, which is the Kent area. Claudia Kaufman is running to fill the vacated seat by Senator Mona Doss. Why this race is so important, and I'm, I will also let Claudia speak to this, but I want to in, state a couple of things. In this race, there is her opponent is uh, a Republican opponent. He is a black man that is being funded by MAGA folks to get him elected. Now, I've met with him briefly uh, before the primaries uh, and, and have invited him onto the show and his campaign manager has declined to have him on claiming that we are too left because we're advocating for people who run for these seats to actually come speak to their constituents. Um, And so I I don't feel that I'm too left, but um, the point is this, none of the seats that we have open right now can be taken for granted. Uh, The funding that is going behind some of these other folks to try to take power away from the people is something we must all pay attention to. And in the Kent area, there wasn't a strong voter turnout uh, last year. And so we've got to mobilize the 47th district. We're pushing the show into that to make sure that we help uh, Claudia get some votes. Let's bring Joy into back in and let's welcome uh, our candidate uh, um, on Indigenous People Week. We're going to welcome <laughs> Claudia Kaufman. Let's bring her in. Yay. <laughs> welcome to the show. Welcome to Heartbeat. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Yeah, we're happy to have you and we're happy to um, showcase your campaign um, so that you can talk to our listeners and viewers about your run. I know you have a history. I know you've been an elected official. Uh, There's a lot you're running on. Let's just give you the floor and talk to the constituents about your campaign. Wonderful. So I'm Claudia Kaufman and I'm running for the state Senate here in the 47th Legislative District. Just to give you a little bit of background, um, I'm a member of the Nez Perce tribe from Idaho. I was born in Idaho, but I grew up in Seattle. My parents moved to Seattle when I was like less than a year old. And first we lived in High Point and then we moved to Beacon Hill. And I'm the youngest of seven children. Ooh. And I can honestly say, I'm, you know, we were, you, you know, low income, working class family. And, you know, we've we've always been involved in community and community organizing and serving community because um, when I was like seven years old, you know, my mom would take me to food banks and clothing banks to volunteer and and to work and to serve our community. And I was raised with those basic values that one, you take care of your children. Uh, Two, uh, you have respect for your elders. Uh, three, you always honor your veterans, and four, you always serve your community. And it's it's those values that I was raised upon, and you know those mm-hmm. tenets uh, that make me continue to serve uh, my community. I've I've been, uh, you know, my father was a World War II veteran. Uh, he he served our our country valiantly in World War II. He told me some of the stories, you know because he didn't really talk about it before but at the end of his life he was he was telling me more about it and it's it's just absolutely amazing and so you know growing up in that in that environment and you know that you always have room for children because our home you know we were seven kids in a three-bedroom house but there was always a neighbor or a cousin or someone down the street you know needed a place to stay and our house was was always known for, you know, you need a place to stay for tonight. You know, go to the Kaufman house, and and so when I grew up, you know, I took that to heart, and I became a foster parent uh, before I had my own children, and opened my house up to uh, teenage girls. And <laughs> you know, a lot of people think foster care is like you know taking in a baby or 
you know, a toddler, but I like foster, you know, you, you have to get those teenage girls and, and get them and center them and place them. And, and that's what I did. And I took in, you know, 10 teenage girls and it was absolutely amazing. I still have contact with them today, but you know, that's the kind of the, the grounding that I had in, in growing up in, in, in Beacon Hill. But, you know, currently I, I live in the city of Kent. I've been here for 21 years. Uh, my children attended public schools. I was the uh, member of the PTA. <laughs> you know, I went to the meetings. I baked the cookies. You know, <laughs> you do those things, you know, to be involved. And and uh, one of my one of my children is, is Down syndrome. So, you know, I became a fierce advocate in the education system in developmental disabilities and as you know as a resident as a homeowner you know involved in my community you know and, and steeped in my in my desire uh, to continue to serve you know I, i'm running once again and you served previously you were a washington state senator from 2007 to 11 is that right uh 2007 2008 2009 and 2010 yes Mm -hmm. um, and so what has driven you to want to rerun for um, public office again? Well, you know, I, I have to say that, you know, service has always been, you know, something that's been driving me. You know, service is critical to me. I've always had a desire to serve and, and continuing in that role. I loved uh, the campaign. I loved serving. Uh, there's an opportunity right here in the 47th with an open seat. Uh, so. I thought this is a, a perfect opportunity and I have my desire and, and I'm a, you know, I'm involved. I'm a, I'm a member of this community for a long time. And so I, I jumped into this race to continue that service. And, and I think it's a great opportunity to go back. You know, it doesn't happen very often for an elected official to come back and, and, and be in that seat again. How did the tribe react you coming back to serve again? Um, how did the, the, the tribal uh, community react to that? Oh, it's very exciting. It's it's yeah. it's been so it's been so inspiring to a lot of people to see, you know, the commitment, the action to go forward. You know, you can't be one and done. You have to continue to go and serve. And uh, they've been very supportive. The tribes throughout Washington mm -hmm. State have supported my my campaign, and you know, so many people have offered to to volunteer and, and and to be part of the campaign and your platform the things that you talk about on your platform are public safety you've already mentioned children's issues housing issues education would you like to ex, um, expand on your views about any of those categories and why you're you've chosen those topics as your platform to run Yes. And, and, you know, it's, it's more than just, you know, it's, it's really the current issue. And when I'm doorbelling, I hear from people at their, at their porch is, it is like, you know, public safety is very important uh, to have, to feel safe in our own communities. And we all deserve that. We all deserve to feel safe. Um, well, and also the spectrum around the, uh, you know, the recent uh, laws that have been passed. Are right. there quite a bit of issues, Claudia, with with um, policing in the Kent area? Wasn't there? There's something going on there. Was it the city council person or something that was? Did, can you expand on that a little bit? Yes, and so within the city of Kent, um, you know, we've had a, a long and storied history here in regards to you know the police uh, use of force, um, mm -hmm. and um, you know, recently there was the um, uh, assistant police chief who had the Nazi signia yeah. upon his door and, and that went on because, you know, when, when you have that environment where you feel like you can do this, you know, that's setting the tone of what is acceptable. And now Kent is paying $1.5 million for him to leave the police force. And so for me, it, it is like, we cannot, you need to set the tone. And, you know, the laws that have been passed, I think, are decades overdue. And, and, you know, 
all of these videos of all these police interactions is, is, is really systemic. It is not, it's just not one or two bad apples. You know, mm -hmm. these are things that we need to change overall. Mm -hmm. And the mayor of Kent, Dana Rolf, is that her name there? Um, she's, um, she's pretty right uh, when it comes to policies there in the Kent area. And so I think what you're trying to bring forward is uh, a more balanced view about people in the community and your advocacy for when you talk about things like education and children, I did see the pictures of your family, um, mm -hmm. you know, people who live, you know, I just call it people with lived experience who come in and are able to bring a more, is the word centered approach to how you solve problems for people uh, rather than the, um, it, it just appears to me, I mean, I don't live in the Kent area, but it appears to be pretty, you know, slanted right and problematic for that area, which is hugely diverse. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah, you have definitely. Okay. Yeah, it is, right? Yeah. And you have some very, very noteworthy endorsements for your campaign. Do you want to talk about a lot of the endorsements that you have? Well, I mean, I picked them all up looking at them today. So <laughs> um, I don't think I saw an elected official whose name is not on your website, but I'll let you talk about your endorsements and their backing of you. Yeah, well, and it's been exciting. And and this comes from, you know, the knowledge of Claudia Kaufman and what she brings. And I think that's truly reflective of of the endorsements that you see, um, you know, like congressional folks like um, Derek Kilmer, Marilyn Strickland, um, uh, Pramila Jayapal. Um, but we also have, you know, a mixture of state senators and state representatives uh, that really show and, and reflect you know, the, the diversity of the support uh, behind Claudia Coffey. It's not one special interest. It is, it is truly a diverse group of people who are supporting me, and including, me. you know, the teachers and the nurses and the National Women's Political Caucus, Pro-Choice Washington. These are important uh, for people um, to see and know you've got the all of the Democrats, the 47th D's, the King County Democrats, like you are heavily endorsed for this. So this is uh, congratulations on uh, pulling that, that much endorsement in for your campaign. It's just, it's actually a statement about you and a statement about, I'll just call it the crisis that this country is in to have the right women leaders in place. Joy and I were talking yes. in the first half about, it's not just about getting women elected. It's about getting the right women right. elected, the right women who will go in and fight and help change and put progressive policies in place to help serve our communities. And so we're just thrilled that uh, you're a candidate and that you uh, are very grassroots and humble and you've served before. So you certainly know your way around uh, Olympia. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's, and I think that's that part of that really it demonstrates um, you know, because I spent 21 years working in government relations for the Muckleshoot Indian tribe, working on on the local, on the county, and the state, and the federal level, um, working in that area, being uh, <clears throat> having those years of experience on a professional level, being a former state senator, but also on, on a personal level and my dedication to civic involvement. And, and getting and working on nonprofit organizations, I think I bring a wealth of experience um, that is far above um, my competition um, and, and much more diverse and much more inclusive and much more lived experience, um, not only as a, as a woman, but as a, as a person of color. And so, you know, I, I bring that all and, and I'm so excited. I'm so excited to be in this. Did you hear my comment before we brought your you on about your opponent? No. Oh, okay. I, I was commenting to our uh, constituents, and we're going to show your website here in just a minute so we can help you with uh, fundraising or donations um, for people to see. I had commented that, um, you know, I, I followed the PDC reports and I see the money that's getting thrown behind him. And so, you know, my personal view on this is, you know, watching MAGA, the MAGAs come to try to 
um, take power. And I, and I caution our audience because I, we know and have spoken about it is a black man running uh, as your opponent. He is running on a Republican ticket. Um, it's scary to us as black women because we're watching how the MAGAs are parading black men uh, in the media for public office. And so far, the track record between Ye and Herschel and the people that they have on tickets is not going to serve our communities. And so I alerted the community to that, that that's who your opponent is. We're showing your uh, website right now to on how to support you. But I don't know if you would agree with that or not. But that was just my slant because I wanted people to pay attention that um, not to fall into a slippery slope of not understanding who the candidates actually are. Right. And, and, you know, and, you know, because I'm running for state Senate because, you know, people really deserve someone who will put money back into, back into their pockets rather than, you know, putting in money back into the, the big developers. You know, my opponent has been supported by big development because he has a record of of allowing tax breaks for big developers on mm -hmm. city owned he's a, property. He's a city council person, right? Yes, he's yes. a current city yeah. council person. Sixteen years. He actually was on on the on the Kent School Board when I was in the state senate when mm -hmm. there was you know the lawsuits against Kent School District for handcuffing children and 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 how they handcuffed children of color more than anyone else. And so, you know, that's the, that's the kind of leadership that, you know, he, he provides. And he tried to sell a city park illegally and got caught and, and then had to pay the developers close to a million dollars to, to buy them off of that uh, because they had already invested in it. And, you know, that's, that's truly who is backing him. And, and also, you know, the, the, you know, the folks who, who are against LGBTQ communities and those who are against uh, a, a woman's right to make her own health care decisions. You know, that's who's that's who's backing him. And, you know, to me, I'm, I'm all about grassroots. I'm all about working. I'm, I, I bring my experience and, and I and I have the knowledge and the understanding of the entire system. Yeah. Claudia, can we talk just a second about your Native Action Network and how you are encouraging and empowering and recruiting other indigenous women to run for office. Yes, <laughs> it's so, so exciting. <clears throat> Native Action Network is a nonprofit organization that Irish Friday and I uh, co-founded back in 2001. And it, some of the core things were about leadership development, but also about civic involvement. and. Throughout the years, we have grown and developed our programming and our services, and we expanded to provide, you know, this advocacy boot camp so that you you can be empowered as a Native woman to to uh, to stand up for your community, to to come on to all of these Washington State boards and commissions. And if you want to run for office, here are some key tools um, that you can take with you and add to your add to your chest that that you have the you have the knowledge you have the understanding and 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 build that confidence and learn about uh public speaking and and you know how to run for campaigns and and that you know you you are good enough you know a lot of folks think they don't have the confidence but you do you i think you're all that in a bag of chips that's my thing i say that all the time and cindy and i both you know ran and so we didn't have a Native Action Network or any merge at the time right. wasn't even, they were just coming on board um, in 2018 when we were running um, and I decided to take it. We're, we're actually pioneers. Like we, yes. we have to give ourselves credit for that. Joy and I are two we're pioneers. Uh, we're pioneers. Like we were yes. to the first one. Two of the five. I remember, I remember five. Melanie, you, me, who were the other two? Um, Deborah Intamin and a lady that was running under a Republican ticket, I think. Maybe a Democratic uh, so ticket. The four of us. Four, four yeah. real. Four okay, four of us. <laughs> but yeah, so yeah, we, yeah. That's. Yeah. that's and, and you know, it, it, we should celebrate that. We should really celebrate that. The women who get involved, who make that commitment to run. I mean, you are putting yourself out there. 
and and you're really giving it your all and you know that should really be celebrated well we're happy to help you now because i went yeah. through it. joyce ran joy ran twice mm -hmm. um, and so yeah we have we have a little bit of a taste in our mouth right now about it so we're happy to support you um, and candidates, you know, we are trying to highlight BIPOC women who are mm -hmm. um, running, I'll just say on a progressive ticket. I, I don't even know why that's how it's characterized, but it's, I don't, it's we're just women who are actually going to go try to get the same thing that they have. There you and go. So, right. Just the same things. We're not asking for anything more. We want equity and we want equality and earning power and health care and all the things that we our communities, people that look like us don't get um, to be able to touch. So we're happy to support uh, the candidates that do this. Uh, we've got just a couple minutes left. If you'd like to, there's some final words you want to say before we close out the show. We're happy to let you talk to the constituents this way. Well, first of all, thank you for allowing me to be here. I really appreciate it. And, and I love your support and your inspiration. And, and it's true, you have laid the groundwork for so many people. <clears throat> pardon me and um i wanted to to talk about you know we do have some uh, canvassing you know doorbelling events it's it's on my facebook page vote claudia kaufman uh, feel free to check out we're doorbelling every single weekend uh you know, until election day and um and feel free to visit my website um, you know i i do have ongoing uh, events. I have an event on October 19th at the Kent Event Center. Um, I hope, I hope, I hope, I hope you can come. It's, it's going to be a great event. And um, I think that's all. <laughs> and vote Claudia Kaufman for Senator 47 LD. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Claudia, for coming on with us tonight. We appreciate that. We are pushing this show into the 47th Legislative District um, Facebook groups and making sure we get you in front of your voters. So um, that's part of the, right? That's part of the, the deal here that we're coming on with us. We are uh, proud evening. of you. We are so proud of you. Keep going. Keep doing what you're doing. Oh. Keep knocking those doors to the bitter end. <laughs> Yes, yes. I'm doing it. I, mean, I was putting up, putting up yard signs all over the place today, and good. You know, good. You know, every every single encounter, you know, I I work and and just be honest and humble about who I am and go. what I'm doing. And so, thank you. You guys inspired right. me. We appreciate thank you, Claudia. Thank you. thank you for signing on. Thank you. All right, Joy. Um, I'm so happy that. We are able to do this as heartbeat. Yes. Um, this yes. is the highlight of the work that we do uh, to be able to showcase candidates and talk about a lot of the stuff. Um, yeah, we do need the strong women in office. And so God bless we are. Heart. Yes, from our heart. Thank I didn't you. know that about Boyce, about who he backed. I just don't follow him much. I just looked at who was putting money in his pocket. So yeah. um, anyhow, yes. Yeah. So anyhow, thank you, um, Claudia, for joining. Um, to our listeners who joined us tonight, thank you for yeah. uh, joining and listening in. Please share this um, video. Please push this and share this with your Facebook groups and make sure we get, uh, this is a, a race we cannot ignore and we cannot leave to chance with the kind of money that is being thrown behind her opponent. So I just wanted to make sure we, we do that. Any final thoughts, Joy, before we sign off this evening? Oh, voting is going to really make a difference this year. So vote, vote, vote. Row, yeah. row, row your vote. <laughs> row, row, row your row, vote. Row, row, row your vote. Um, I was there Saturday at the sign waving that went on across the country uh, on Saturday. And so um, it's vitally important. Um, this mm -hmm. is our way of making a statement, I think, and and really standing up to what happened with Roe mm -hmm. versus Wade and mm -hmm. standing up for our communities and people who don't always get a voice at the table or a seat at the table. So I, I think all of the midterms this year, it's going to yeah. be, that evening is going to be a fascinating evening to watch and see yeah. what is happening across the country. I'm, you know, I'm thrilled that our president is making some progress now on um, some of the issues uh, for communities of color. Um, yeah. They're in the thick of time right before uh, this election, but we certainly need all hands on deck 
And yes, um, we do. yeah, just going to be fascinating to watch. So it a is. lot of people across the country, the Stacey Abrams, you know, Ralph Warnack, and yeah. you know, there's a lot of folks that we got to make sure. And I'm just going to give a shout out. As my cousin is Lynn Gladney. She is running for the House of Representatives in the state uh, of Georgia also. So my family is uh, another family member stepping into politics. So rooting her on. That's Listen, awesome. we, good time That's like, awesome. we enjoyed this conversation tonight. So thank you all for our listeners who joined us tonight. Remember, we got to get out the vote, get out the vote, get out the vote. All right. Have a good evening, everybody. And we shall see you all next week. Have a good evening, everybody. That at the sacks, I favor black businesses. Assuming I'm rooting for everybody that's black. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Assuming I'm rooting for everybody that's black. Yo, yo, yo.